everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Nutty Wednesday, Cooking with Amy and Bristol, who is a little preoccupied. Do you want to come for a minute? Do you want to come for one minute? We've got Charlotte standing here and Bristol standing here, and neither one anybody wanted to sit in their chair today. Um, I will let you know that uh, there is a repair guy in my house right now fixing my furnace. So if you see people walking across or talking, uh, they are also a possibility of fixing my fireplace. That's a whole other story. So this is our weekly edition of cooking and I've got a few things going on right here and a few things that I have pre-started so that today's video can actually show from start to finish a very simple, really easy, so yummy recipe that anyone can do it and we've got a few tools that I've got sitting here that you're going to be able to see in, in use. So the very first thing I'm going to do is we're going to make dough, okay? So we are making pierogies today um, and uh, a really neat, tangy, uh, savory pierogi. What I love about this recipe um, is I have saved this recipe, um, the, this dough recipe in the past, um, and then made uh, a few additions to it. And this recipe you can use for both sweet and savory. I also find the dough you can use for actually things like a baked brie, um, which I'm gonna be shooting some videos this week. Uh, getting into the season, I mean guys, I don't know if you realize that today is actually 31 days till Christmas, which like a month from today right now is Christmas Eve. What? I know, it's mind blowing. And between now and then, I know we all have lots and lots of things to do. I know I do. Um, and I'm really looking forward to even doing small gatherings again this year. So I'm gonna be doing some heavy concentrating on recipes for appetizers and sides. Uh, side slash appetizers that you could do for either and this is one of those that I do find you can cook ahead and you can take uh, you can also take the dough like I said and do it other ways so really really simply um, and once again I was smart this week and I printed out the recipe because I save all my recipes I don't know about you guys but I normally find a recipe and I save it um, and then I have to take my computer or whatever I was smart the second week in a row that I've actually printed it, which is amazing. So for the dough, again, really simple. We're gonna take two cups of flour. And if you do have a mix master, this is a really good one that you can just do right in the mix master. Okay, so two cups of flour. We're doing a teaspoon of salt. We're doing two tablespoons of melted butter. Thank you, Shasha. So two tablespoons of melted butter. And again, you know how much I absolutely adore our measure all cup. So this is the mini, the teeny weeny one, and it does tablespoons, which is awesome. And I'm just going to take two tablespoons of butter. So again, I'm just pushing it down to the tablespoon mark there, throwing in. Now this butter is room temperature. So I'm just gonna warm it in the microwave for just a hair, just to get it melty. And you are throwing everything together in, in the pot. Now, if you don't have a mix master, no stress. Uh, this recipe just says to knead it for two to three minutes. So again, any uh, opportunity that if you do have the mix master, obviously it just makes your hands a little less messy. Um, I'm going to use obviously the dough hook, okay? So I'm gonna use the dough hook. So I've added the two cups plus the salt, one egg, and I'm adding one cup of Greek yogurt. Now, a normal pierogi recipe would call for sour cream. I find the Greek yogurt gives it this really neat tang um, and I can cut the fat out a little bit before I add potatoes, bacon, cheese, which I know sounds crazy, but anywhere where I can a tiny bit make it an adjustment, I do, and I find it's really, really tasty. 
Um, so again, this is the measure all cup. This is the two cup version versus the little baby one. See if we can see there. So again, I'm just moving it right to the one cup and I've got that there. And I'm just using the Liberté Greek yogurt. You use whatever you want. Again, if you use sour cream, do it. Uh, if you've never tried it with Greek yogurt, I suggest trying it. It's just really, really good. And for those who are on a plant-based diet or dairy-free uh, diet, this is one of those recipes that you could do an alternative to any of your um, any of the plant-based yogurts or the plant-based sour cream. If you haven't tried yet the President's Choice uh, sour cream, plant-based, it's actually quite nice. And I believe they now actually have a cream cheese as well. So again, if you're plant-based, this is one that you can do. Um, if you're vegan, whoops, let's not break my master. If you are vegan, um, and this recipe calls for an egg, this is when we would do the egg substitute. And just remember, one egg, a substitute is three tablespoons of water to one tablespoon of flax. And that'll give you the um, same one-to-one -one as does the egg. And what you wanna do for the substitute is you wanna leave the uh, flax and the water sit for about 15, 20 minutes. I normally leave it. If I know I'm gonna be baking, I'll just you know do it beforehand and just kinda let it sit. And it kinda gets thick. And then easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, I'm just gonna knead that there. Uh, let it do its thing. While it's doing that, I'm going to show you what I did ahead. Okay, so in my glass bowl with my silicone lids, which this is the small medium version, this is the small, um, is I actually already did the dough ahead, okay? I love my husband. I'm on live and he's got his dirty lunch dish there. That's great. Uh, I actually did the dough ahead, so I wanted to show you because what you're going to do is after the dough is done and kneaded, you're going to put it in a bowl and cover it for about 20 minutes to a half of an hour, just on the counter. This isn't like a bread dough where you need it to rise so you want it to proof for hours ahead. This is a really, again, a very, very easy recipe that you can just simply decide half of an hour to an hour before dinner that you actually want a pierogi, and it's really simple to do. So I'm noticing that my dough is just a little bit dry, so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more of Greek yogurt. So if you do ever find your dough is a little bit, uh, a little bit dry, just add a hair bit of more yogurt. And again, I'm just gonna let that go for a minute. And I wanna show you what the consistency of the dough will look like, okay? So it's kind of sticky. There you can see it's sticky, sticking to itself. It's got a beautiful aroma because of the Greek yogurt. And you can see there, without my hand is wet, you can see there it's not sticking to my hand at all. Okay, so it's, it's sticky, but it's not sticking, if that makes any sense, okay? And I'll show you here what I mean because this dough is done. So here's the dough here. Again, I've just taken it out of the mix master. That's a blob of yogurt that we didn't need. And you can see there, it's not sticking to my hands at all. It's sticky, but not sticky, okay? So I'm gonna take this dough out, because that's the dough I did ahead of time, and we're just gonna let that rest. Now, this is one of those recipes that if I'm going to be making them, I might as well make a few batches. Uh, they freeze really nicely. Uh, my suggestion would be to flash freeze them. So again, you would roll them out, uh, stuff them, whatever you're gonna stuff them with, and then you can put them on a cookie sheet, put them in the freezer for about an hour, take them out, and then you can put them in any containers, a block bag, whatever you need to do, okay? so. This recipe calls for uh, garlic mashed potatoes. So any mashed potato that you might have ahead, uh, again, 
This is one of those recipes. You've got leftovers. You're not exactly sure on what to do. Um, this is one of those suggestions that save your mashed potatoes. Uh, Danielle, look what you can do. You're perfect. I know it's so, they're so good, Danielle. Danielle, they're so good and so simple. So leftover mashed potatoes. Now I, you can see there, mine have skins on them. That's what I had. I don't, when I do the baby potatoes, I don't bother peeling them, skin and all, who cares? Uh, this recipe had garlic already in them. If they didn't, my, Charlotte, you know, it's a good thing I like puppies because um, she apparently likes cheese with those little puppy dog eyes. Um, so if you didn't put garlic in your mashed potatoes ahead of time, because uh, again, we're gonna use leftovers, throw the garlic in. If you don't have leftover mashed potatoes, that's okay too. Again, pre-cook your potatoes, you can do that ahead of time. The cooler the better, you add your garlic to them and just let them sit, that's fine. So this recipe is calling for a cup of cheese and I went ahead and mixed some cheese into the potatoes already because I wanted to show you guys from start to finish what the pierogies might look like. So again, I'm just going to shred my cheese in my small bowl. Uh, I've talked about the, the grater and it's so great. I know I've made that corny joke again, but you know, you guys are here, you're gonna get it time and time again. What I love about it is it's got the little feet here on the bottom. So again, this button controls how I want the handle, whether I wanna shred right onto the counter or a plate or over top of a bowl. And because of these little feet, they actually also create a catch-all on the bowl, which is going to allow us to not have the sliding. So I'm going to use the protector today. I'm just gonna put the cheese in here and I'm just going to shred some cheese and get the potatoes going. Now, I can't wait to show you how easy it is to roll these out, how simple it is to make these, and how delicious they are. Like I said, this is one of those recipes that the dough can be saved and used for a sweet or a savory, indeed. Any way that you wanna do it, you absolutely can. Okay, let me just shred a little bit more cheese there. I am not hurting my fingers at all. And just going along. Okay, it's good enough for now. Okay, so I've got some cheese there. I'm gonna to toss the cheese into the potatoes. It's calling for about a cup of shredded cheese. Okay. And I'm just mixing the cheese in the potatoes. And I've got my, that's a bowl, that's not. This is my uh, glass measuring bowl. This is the eight cup, so this is the large, comes with a glass lid. Awesome for stirring, keeping things ahead. Freezer, fridge, safe, oven, microwave. And there you go, I've got some cheesy garlic mashed potatoes. Now again, if you are dairy free, any dairy free cheese can be in it, you can stuff this with whatever that you do want. Um, an alternative to the butter would obviously be the margarine. Uh, all of that can be done. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour and I've got my pastry mat going here. I love the Pampered Chef pastry mat. Now if you're not a huge chef, and you've always wondered about this mat and how often you would use this mat, trust me, anything that you can imagine that you might cook or bake that you might be using your counter for, you would use this mat. Um, and it, what's great is that you can see it's got the um, measurements already for pie dough, for example, and it's super, super simple. So I'm going to be using today, and I've talked so much about my other roller, which I love my other roller. Um, I use it, yes, there you go, see? Carol is just saying she rolls her cookies out on her mat. I rolled so much on this mat. When I was a kid, my grandmother, my nana and my mom always just used the counter. 
I just assumed that's what everybody did. I didn't even have the pastry mat until I started to sell Pampered Chef like five years ago. And I was like, holy Hannah. Like, and it's so gorgeous because it's silicone. So it's heat resistant and it just, it's non-slip. Like it's so great and it's so easy to clean. It's so easy to clean. Now, you can see here, I'm just rolling a little bit of the dough out here. Uh, again, normally I would roll probably a good half a chunk of this. And this is a very uh, plausible dough. You want it about an H, eight, that's a hard word to say apparently, eight of an inch thick. And again, keep rolling. And that is a really good, again, the thickness, you can see there, it's easy, very, very easy to use, very, very simple. Now, I have showed before, but some of you might not have been here, to see my pie pastry and, what is this called? Mini pie and pastry maker. That's, I think, what it's called. It's new. Um, I don't know, I just called the pie maker because we make ham pies with it. We've done pizzas, we've done uh, chicken and cheese in here. Uh, I've done obviously pierogies. I love, love, love this. So it comes with three pieces. The spoon sits into the center and this is your measurer, okay? And then there's the two pieces. So this is the cutter, okay? You can cut on both sides. Uh, the, this, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the pierogi version of it. So if you were doing a hand pie, you would cut one, fill it, and then you cut another and you have a top. It's awesome because you would just put this on top and it squeezes it shut. So I'm gonna show you this, how great it is to cut it. So I'm just going to cut it again, just so that I'm showing two, okay? So here is our maker. And this is, again, we're not, I'm not doing the full, I'm doing a half of a tart of a pierogi. And I'm going to take my measuring spoon and I'm just going to fill it with one scoop. So if you're going to use this in the half version, you wanna just put half of it in there, squeeze it and its little teeth, seal it shut, and this is our pierogi, okay? Again, very, very simply, easy to do. Okay, hold please, hold, hold please. Are you gonna move the camera? Yep, no, okay. we'll just walk there. All right, everybody's gonna go through. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, so you saw how simple that is to make. Our hand and pie maker is like under $32. It is unbelievably fabulous. Um, and a really, really simple, what is Carol saying? Here's a tip. Uh, yes, a paint stir stick is one of an 818. Look at that, see? You know what I love about our Pampered Chef community? Everyone has some, like, some little side notes. One on each side and place the rolling pin in. Ah, look at that. So again, I've just got one scoop. I'm gonna squeeze it shut. You can see its little teeth. I don't know why, but I keep adding extra dough onto one side. It's all good. And there you go. Okay, so there's two pierogies that I have made in seconds. With leftover mashed potatoes, added some shredded cheese, mind blowing, like you saw how easy it was to make that dough. So what I did ahead of time is I actually boiled the pierogies. So the recipe is, going, is calling for us to boil the potatoes ahead of time. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you uh, again, there's the cooked pierogi, okay, so I did two of them, and I'm going to do just these two for now. While we're talking, I'm going to boil the other two because there are two different ways that we're going to prep these bad boys today. So, one, we're going to actually do them in uh, butter, we're going to make a garlic rosemary bacon sauce that the pierogies are then going to be cooked in. And in the other pan, I'm going to toss those suckers into the air fryer. So those of you who have an air fryer, you know how amazing it is. You don't need to get anything else dirty. If you've never had a pierogi in the air fryer, I'm going to tell you right now, it's mind blowing. 
In fact, I don't normally even pre-do. Uh, I don't pre-boil mine. I just make sure they're thawed. So I am going to show you two different ways that you can do them, okay? So I'm gonna move the camera a little bit so that you can see here on the stove top. So again, here's our pierogies that I've boiled. You can see how nice they come out. They are all crimped still and nothing fell out. Amazing. I'm just gonna move you a hair over here and that way you guys can see the pan. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the 12 inch non-stick stainless steel pan. This is uh, also comes in the wok version, which again, I've talked about the wok version so many times, I absolutely love it. But I love the depth of this pan and I love the fact that I can do um, both non-stick and stainless steel, which means I can sear, I can do high heat or I can do small heat. I love this pan. And because it's 12 inch, I can cook a whack ton of the pierogies. Now, with the, <laughs> hi Dave. With the pierogies, another uh, side is when you are coming on to my VIP page and you get this recipe, so if you're not on my VIP page, hop on over to the VIP page after you're done watching. The recipe's gonna be on there and I'm gonna give you some ideas like cranberry and brie that you can stuff inside these pierogies. Then you toss them into the air fryer and you make like a little appetizer. Uh, they're really nice with leftover turkey. They are beautiful in the air fryer or to be boiled. Again, I'm all about how well can I use my um, air fryer? How can I not have to use all kinds of things all at the same time? But this recipe is like, mwah, it's so good. Okay, so now that we've got our dough, we've got our pierogies going, saw how easy and fast that was. My hands are barely dirty, like it's awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to make the butter sauce and I'm going to add the, so it says eight tablespoons, which is actually a half of a cup of butter to the bottom of this pan. So I pre-melted the butter. I probably didn't need to because obviously we're using, uh, we're putting it in the pan but I wanted to brown it for you because that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be browning the butter. So we're adding that, we're adding two to three cloves of garlic, so therefore we're adding three to four cloves of garlic. For those of you who know me know how much I love garlic, love my garlic press. Do not have to peel my garlic at all. Uh, again, those of you who have do not have this garlic press, this is one of those products that you need to have. It is life changing. I mean, look right here. There's my peeling. How easy is that? Did you know that you can also do ginger in here? So if you like ginger tea or you're, you know, we're all getting ready to be doing our baking. You want some fresh ginger for your recipes to be able to just simply squeeze your ginger right into your pan. Now for your ginger, obviously you will have to peel it a tiny bit. Um, but again, it's the ease and the uh, simplicity of what else can I do with my garlic press. Oh, this is elephant garlic, so it is a bit tall. But tall. Yeah, it might be tall too, but it's actually thick. Again, look how easy that is, peeling coming right out. I'm going to do one more clove of garlic. I love me some garlic. Sorry, Annie, if you're on here. Okay, so we've got the garlic going on there, we've got the butter, and we're just going to sit that and start to brown it. Smells amazing, obviously garlic butter, who doesn't love it? I mean, Dave's going to start crab, uh, wishing we had crab legs or lobster right now. Uh, we are also going to be adding one tablespoon of chopped rosemary. Okay, so I've got some fresh rosemary here. I am going to be putting it into my manual food processor. Another easy way for me to chop. And again, these recipes are very easy when you have the tools that make your life easy. So if you are thinking about any holiday shopping, let me know. I've got a shared rewards party going on right now. I've got a vanilla deal going on right now. All the um, sales from the Shared Rewards Party are being donated to the, uh, our, the food bank 
the Daily Bread Food Bank are in desperate, desperate need this season. For those of us that are so blessed in this country to be able to eat and to have what we've had, to, for those of us that have survived COVID and uh, still have our jobs because of COVID, um, it was just a way for me to give back. So I've got a deal on vanilla right now. Um, the deal is $38 for a bottle of vanilla. No tax, no shipping. Our vanilla is double strength. And if you are thinking about any of that, let me know. So we've got the rosemary chopped in there. Adding that, oh my God, it smells so good in here. And the garlic, the rosemary, and the butter are gonna come together. While that is browning a little bit, I am going to throw these other pierogies into the air fryer. And they are not pre-cooked, so I don't have to worry about any of that. And, um, I am just going to, um, these are our, li our um, trays. I bought these liners at um, Amazon. They are awesome. If anybody wants the link, let me know. It just sits right there on your tray and then it keeps, um, just keeps your trays a little bit cleaner. Um, it doesn't, it, you know, some of the grease gets caught on. It still has the bubbles uh, for the air circulation, but it just kind of catches some of them. So I'm gonna put these two on the air fryer I'm gonna to toss them in and I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen with these, okay? Okay, so those are going on in the air fryer. Our butter, our rosemary and garlic are sitting here. I am going to be adding to the recipe I am going to be adding a little bit of bacon. So, I have pre-cooked bacon. I had chopped it up, and I'm just gonna add, it says to add three or four pieces. So because I pre-ahead of time chopped the bacon, uh, I don't know how much a, a cup is, or three pieces, I should say. So I'm just taking a, a, like a pretty good handful, just stirring that up. And now I'm gonna add my pierogies. Now I'm gonna turn my heat down. And the pre-cooked pierogies that we have that just dried a little bit, I'm gonna to toss them in. And we are going to cook them in the sauce just to combine. And we can top them with a little bit more bacon and a little bit of cheddar cheese. And because of our, the size of our pierogies, they're a pretty nice size. But from start to finish, they are a very, very easy, easy recipe that the dough can be made ahead of time. The potatoes, God knows, are done ahead of time. And guys, Anything can be stuffed in these buggers. They are incredible. So I'm just going to warm these for a couple more seconds. Um, just getting those so that you can see what they look like. <coughs> and I'm going to add that. I don't even have any more shredded cheese. I'll shred some cheese just to show the top that we can shred some cheese. There we go. So this is today's recipe. We've got some potato cheddar, double garlic, butter rosemary sauce, sauced pierogies. When the other pierogies come out of the air fryer, I'm gonna post a picture. Again, that'll be over on our VIP page. I'll give you some ideas on what you can do with this dough. This is an amazing recipe to, like I said, do pierogies ahead of time, 
stuff them with whatever. This is a gorgeous appetizer. It makes a gorgeous side. And for those of you who love pierogies, also can be a main. Um, again, alternatively, if you want to substitute with your dairy-free or even a vegan alternative, everything is easy peasy and so simple to do. I'm just going to quickly show you what the air fryer looks like right now. These have been in for two minutes. And you can just see how they're lightly browning themselves. And again, I haven't pre-cooked them. That's what's awesome about it. The air fryer is going to do everything. Then I wouldn't have a mess. And I can still top it with a little bit of cheddar cheese and bacon. Dip it with sour cream versus this butter sauce. But this butter sauce is incredible. It's incredible. So I'm so glad you're here today. Hop on over to my VIP page to get this recipe. And guys, pierogies, it's what's for dinner on a Wednesday. Hope you have a great day.